Hello everyone, welcome to A plus BI. This channel is all about complex numbers and in this video we're going to be solving a very very complex problem. We have z to the power 1 over z equals i and we're going to try to solve for z. All right, great. So before we get into the solution, I want you to think about what complex number could possibly satisfy this equation. And then let's check our results at the end. All right, great. So where does this problem come from? Thank you, FSPONJ. I don't know how to read that for this suggestion. A beautiful idea. I really like the problem. So. Let's see how we can solve it. z to the power 1 over z equals i. And we can do the e in another video. Now, to be able to solve this problem, first of all, if you think about, okay, can z be something that we are familiar with, like maybe i itself, or negative i, or some type of a plus b i, right? So many ways to think about it. And it's going to be a little harder that way. I think. So here's what we're going to do instead. First of all, whenever you have something like z to the power w, you can write it as e to the power w ln z. So two definitions here. First of all, what is a complex exponential? Because it's kind of like the complex number to a complex number. So for example, i to the power i or 1 plus i to the power 1 minus i. I think I've done some videos about these before. You can go out and check them out. Now, we have the complex exponential. So it can be defined as an exponential, right? e to the power something. But then the natural log of a complex number, let's go ahead and quickly write that definition down. It's the ln of the absolute value plus i times the argument of z. And of course, when you say argument of z, there is the principal argument, and then you can add multiples of 2 pi to it. Okay, cool. Now let's go ahead and apply these rules. First, we start with z to the power 1 over z. And we can go ahead and write it as e to the power 1 over z ln z. And some people just uh, natural log both sides, which is fine, but this is the more important part. How do you write e as an exponential? e on the argand plane, if you think about it, argand is, by the way, A-R-G-A-N-D. That's how you spell it. I don't know, some people think that there's no d there, but it's going to be like 0 plus i or 0, zero plus 1i. In other words, it corresponds to the point 0, 0,1, which is on the y-axis, but we call that the imaginary axis now. And this is the real one, okay? So i is imaginary, no real part. Basically, that's where it is located. So if you connect i to the origin, basically, it's going to become like a vector. And then you can also talk about some direction and an angle that it makes with the real axis, okay, with the positive side. So this angle is called the argument, and in this case, the argument of our number, i, yeah, I, should, I guess uh, instead of z, I should call that i, would be pi over 2. But pi over 2 is just the principal argument because you're allowed to add multiples of 2 pi. If you make one full rotation, like you're going to come to the same point, add 2 pi to it, 4 pi to it, you can even subtract multiples of 2 pi, it's going to be the same way. Okay. In other words, you can express it as pi over 2 plus 2 pi n right? But then, of course, we're going to multiply this by i because Euler's formula gives us that. So how, what does Euler's formula give us? It tells us that, okay, if you have a complex number with argument theta and modulus r, you can write it as r times e to the i theta. The modulus is 1 because, obviously, i is 1 unit away from 0, so we don't need to write it, but we can just write it as e to the power i times pi over 2. But if you consider all the possibilities, then you're going to be adding 2 pi n. Let's add it for now, and we'll probably simplify that a little later. And now we got a nice equation from here. Natural log both sides. You're going to get 1 over z, 1 over z, ln z, equals i times pi over 2 plus 2 pi n. If you want, you can call this whole thing k. And by the way, n is an integer here. Could be positive or negative. And then you can just go ahead and call that k if you want, because that's going to be a constant for a certain value of n. And then it's just going to be a constant multiple of i. Not an integer multiple, just a constant, okay? Anyways, let's go ahead and put this in a nicer form. We have the 1 over z times ln z. So what should I do with this? 
First of all, one over z can be written as z to the power negative one. So let's go ahead and write it that way. And then uh, for simplicity's sake, I can go ahead and stick to n equals zero, the particular value. And again, whatever I do here, you can apply it to the general solution. The only difference is going to be you just have to have two pi on every time. Make sense? Okay, same idea, but let's just go ahead and keep, keep it simple first. Now, I have ln z and z to the power of negative one. I would like to have the same thing here because I'm going to put it in a special form. And that can be done by considering the following. What is ln z to the power of negative one? It is negative one times ln z or negative ln z. So what we can do is we can actually multiply both sides by negative one. That's just going to bring a minus sign on both sides and then put this negative as negative one over here. So now our expression becomes ln z to the power of negative one times z to the power of negative one, which is nice because they are the same, equals negative i pi over two. Again, if you want, you can replace pi over two with pi over two plus two pi n every time that appears, okay? That's the key basically to uh, the general solution. Now, we're so close to what we are looking for, and you know what we're looking for? We're looking for t e to the t. Or if you like coffee better, you can say coffee times e to the power coffee. Now what happens, let's just use coffee for once because we always use t. And if you use coffee and apply Lambert's w function, ta-da, this is the function we've been trying to get at, you're gonna be getting basically coffee. So Lambert's w function is a special machine that turns coffee times e to the coffee into coffee. Isn't that cool? Okay, so it's kind of like a transformation. Now, what is our coffee though? Where's the coffee? Where's the e to the coffee? So that's why we need to do a little bit more work here. And that can be done by considering the following. z to the power a negative 1 can actually be written as e to the power ln z to the power negative 1 because that's the same thing, right? e to the ln z is z giving us z to the power negative 1. Get the idea? Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. We have now ln z to the power negative 1 multiplied by e to the power ln z to the power negative 1. And guess what? This is going to be your coffee. Okay? So now if you apply Lambert's w function, and of course, we still have negative i pi over 2 on the right hand side. So we still have to consider that. But if you apply Lambert's w function on both sides, then you're going to get something like this. Notice I keep it simple by using pi over two. You're gonna be getting ln z to the power negative one from the left hand side because that's your coffee, remember? <laughs> Don't forget that, right? Okay. Now that's ln z to the power negative one and this is just w something. Now this is a constant, right? Obviously it has infinitely many values if you consider the analytic continuation of the numbers of the function. Anyways, some crazy stuff, but let's just stick to this value for now. Uh, bring the negative one down, properties of logs, and now here's what I want to do. I want to solve for z, right? How do you solve for z? First of all, let's get rid of the negative sign. That's going to put a minus sign on the right hand side, just kind of switch around. And now, we want to do e to the power both sides. If you do e to the power both sides, then e to the ln z is just z. So from here, z is going to be e to the power negative w of negative i pi over 2. So what is this value you might be considering? But just put it into Wolfram Alpha as product log, and I'll show you some results of negative i pi over 2 it's going to give you a numerical value and you can even put the e at the bottom and put a minus sign. Hopefully that'll work. It should give you the z value. Let's go ahead and check it out from Wolfram Alpha. I already did it, but let's see what I got, right? And ta-da, these are the solutions. And again, Wolfram Alpha obviously is considering the 2 pi n. Uh-oh, that's not good. And if you consider 2 pi n here, of course, that's what you're going to get. But what about the second and the third solutions? That's going to be pretty interesting because well, from office considering the different branches of the uh, Lambert's W function. And this brings us to the end of this video. Well, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. And thank you very much one more time, F-S-P-O-N-J, for the suggestion. And please keep up the good work. 
and I'll see you next time. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.